Welcome everyone to this special conversation associated with the FICO Educational Analytics Challenge. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Bowie State University to a conversation um, around their participation in FICO's Educational Analytics Challenge. I'm so excited to be here to speak with uh, the Bowie State representatives about the program. We're proud to partner with Bowie State and we congratulate uh, you for completing the challenge. Before we dive into your approach, and I wanna really just recap for everyone who's listening, what is the, the FICO Education uh, Analytics Challenge? This FICO Educational Analytics Challenge is the first ever FICO college program that presents students with real life and real world practitioner challenges as they prepare themselves in their data science careers uh, for work in financial services and throughout the AI industry where firms are operationalizing AI analytics uh, and machine learning and working with real world data. This year's FICO uh, educational challenge is focused on identifying and mitigating uh, bias in data and subsequently improving models that are based on this historical data. For this project, we gave a, a historical lending data, which was collected by the CFPB as part of the Home Mortgage Disclosure Act to allow Bui State to have an opportunity to work with this real life data and to examine the issues of bias and how to remediate bias in data. This is a big part of having the students having a chance to explore different complex and real life altering data science decisions um, in, their, in their teams. As they focus on these new concepts of responsible AI, which are used to protect and safely advance analytic practices. Responsible AI involves having models that are built robustly and carefully, models that are explainable, models that have bias detected and removed, and, and finally just audible to ensure that we have deep understanding of the models that are used to make decisions about us and, and those in our communities. The Bowie State students had an opportunity to be mentored by myself and, and moreover by my team of data scientists throughout this semester long challenge. And I invited a few of the students here um, to represent their class uh, and, and uh, participants in this challenge. I wanna thank uh, Bowie State faculty members, uh, Dr. Lotson and Dr. Miller, um, as well as the two uh, student participants um, representing their team, uh, Olivia Ross and Medina on um, joining me today in this conversation. So let's dive in with the professors first. All right, I'm gonna start with a few questions for you, Dr. Lotson and Dr. Miller. Sure. Um, can you just first tell us a bit about um, the audience, about your roles at Bowie State and, and why you chose to participate in this program um, with your students? Well, thank you, Scott. First, let me say thank you for inviting me to participate in this uh, recording. I appreciate the opportunity to share some of the successes we've had at Bowie State University. So I am an assistant professor in the Department of Technology and Security at Bowie State University. And the I am also a member of the HBCU Data Science Consortium, uh, co-lead and co-executive director of that particular um, organization. And so, the challenge was brought to the HBCU Data Science Consortium as an opportunity to reach out to um, the HBCU community to offer this challenge to, to universities. <clears throat> and I believe it may have been a late date or I'm not sure what happened, but there were two institutions that jumped at the chance and Bowie being that one. And so just having an opportunity to have students exposed to data analytics and data science principles, machine learning, all of that, which makes up um, data science is an opportunity for them. Um, one thing I would like to say that I really appreciate is that puzzle piece of data science talks about domain expertise. And so having the ability for the students to participate in an area that was specific to a particular domain, I think was part of the enriching experience of the data analytics challenge. Thank you, Dr. Watson. Dr. Miller? Yes, uh, so I've been an adjunct uh, at Bowie State University for the last five years. Um, I teach the data science courses for the department and any opportunity I have to sort of uh, give students a real world experience in data science is important to me. And so I thought this FICO challenge was an important project for me to be a part of. 
And furthermore, my goal as an adjunct to Bowie is to increase diversity in this field. Um, and so I, I see my role as pivotal in sort of pushing students, helping students really understand what the work looks like in real life and sort of pushing and encourage them to really uh, go to jobs or go to grad, get, go to graduate school after they graduate in this particular field. Wonderful. Yeah. And, well, I, I love it. And, and you know, frankly, the, the concept of, you know, having real life data and that domain experience and, and allowing the students to, to really work on, you know, you know, the, the, the real the, the real life and, and hard sort of aspects of data science is really a unique experience. I know, you know, for, for any of the colleges that we work with or universities, right, it's always a problem with them getting data that's relevant, right? And we, we very often, you know, talk through concepts and teach algorithms um, and, and work with, you know, example data. But, you know, here, I think it was a, a really fun experience and great to see these young minds really puzzle on how to, to drive forward with, with data science and, and work in this domain. Um, with that said, you know, you know, this this is a, a real life data set, and it was large and, and complex. And you know, the, the the Bowie State students came together as a team. I had the, the very great pleasure of spending um, time with them and, and visiting and, and getting to to talk with them about their journeys. And I always find it really, really interesting and insightful. And you know, to see how they're looking at these problems. Um, can you provide insights um, into, you know, how, how did the project start and, and what were you observing when, when the students were tackling this data and, and trying to first look into, you know, where there was bias and, and you know, working with that data? What, what were some of the early insights as they started these projects and started working with the data? So the, the team decided to work as one group. Uh, but they paired off and different pairs would delve into different, different areas of the project. Uh, what the students learned early on is that everyone came to this project with a unique set of skills. And we thought it was best to hone in on those skills. So we had students on the team who were really good at research and really wanted to understand uh, how bias operates in the data science pipeline. We had other students who are really interested in mortgage or lending, the lending and how does bias play out in lending overall and how does it relate to mortgage lending in particular. I had some students, uh, particularly uh, Olivia Medina, who are really good at Python and data analytics, and they just said, we will take this part on. And so the first thing the team did was figure out who does what. And I think that that is important because I try to emphasize that data science teams are diverse. And the students in the cyber, in the, in the security and technology department at Bowie, they all come with a variety of skill sets. And so, um, and it played out as we, as we started uh, doing the project. Um, the students also, um, you know, one of the early tasks is that we delved into the data, of course. We wanted to first see and understand, well, what is this data telling us? What, what's here? We saw race, we saw gender, there, were, there was income data. And so how do we make sense of this data set first? And so I had a handful of students who were interested in doing the research and really trying to understand the context. And then other students who really wanted to delve into the data and, and figure out what is this data that FICO has given us and how can we use it to sort of address this problem. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, but great, great points. And, you know, diversity of thought and diversity of, of background is, is super important, right? Um, we we'll, we'll all have our, our blind sides, right, in terms of what we see and don't see, and we all have our strengths. And, you know, relying on and understanding that, you know, those that have, you know, different aspects of, of strengths in terms of looking at that problem, providing new insights is, is, is really, um, really critically important, right? So it's great to hear that the students saw that right away. You know, some were really good at, let's say, Python and, and the data science side. Others maybe had, you know, a, some more of the soft skills or intuition that, that you know, they got time to explore because they were spending more of their time there. That sounds wonderful. Um, Dr. Lotson, any, any other sort of uh, initial impressions as students started to work on the project? Sure. Um, we gave students also an opportunity to just do preliminary research on um, bias in data science itself. And so it helped some students in the summertime who did some preliminary research that they were able to bring into the capstone course themselves. So I think um, 
having an opportunity to explore the problem, to understand um, the, the company of FICO, to understand what type of business it actually is, to understand the domain actually, right? To become familiar with how they work, the processes that's going on in the company so that they could further understand how they should look at the data and how they should make some um, interpretations or some, some um, decisions about how to do that. So they were able to do that through the summer and bring that into the classroom. So it was a really good process that I think we, we took to do that. That's a great point. And, and, you know, that was one of the things I think that was really, really impressive uh, early on is just the fact that the students were already armed with, you know, many different types of, of bias that they were going, they're, they're going to look at, right. And uh, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, confirmational bias or represent, representation bias or other types of bias. And I think, you know, to, to your point, Dr. Lotson, that, that work in the summer of getting them just prepared with this sort of focus on how, how complex bias can be um, and, and then being prepared to look at a real life data set, I think was really good for the students. I, I, I was really impressed very early on going through different definitions of bias and what did they see or not see in the data set um, really showed that they were you know, armed to, to attack that problem um, in terms of that, that, that pre-work. And, and frankly, right, um, given you know, where we are from a data science and model perspective, right, this will continue to be the, the case, right? That, you know, I, I like to say, although it's unfortunate, that, that all data is biased and dirty and, and, and problematic, right? And so you know, from that perspective, going in with not whether the, bi the data is biased, but it is biased and trying to quantify it and trying to understand it. So it has you know, a limited impact on the model, I, I think is, is key. So I, I, I really appreciated um, their pre-work because um, I think they got very, very tactical on the, on the bias sort of treatments there. So then, um, you know, towards the end of the project, right, they, they spent more time, they did their analysis. I already referenced some of the bias work and all the good work that the students did. They're looking at these different, different definitions. Um, you know, and, and they made the presentation to FICO and they, and they worked through what they found in that data, right, um, and what changes they would look to do, right, as, as was mentioned um, by Dr. Miller, right, we, a race was in there and genders in there and, and incomes in there and things that are generally not used, let's say, in a credit score, but are part of this um, mm -hmm. Mortgage Disclosure Act data. Um, and the students, you know, got to make their own decisions about what they included, did not include, and ultimately, you know, from my perspective, right, um, beyond just trying to quantify bias, they, you know, they, they had some ideas on how they might build a fairer model, right? And I think that was, you know, th that was a huge part of it, right? And I'd say fairer, right? Um, that was my impression because these are hard problems. But wh wh where do you think the, the students got to from your perspective um, working through the project? Um, you know, I, I view this as something that's never, never quite done, right? There's, there's always work to be done. But once they applied these concepts from the summer and they, they worked with the data and they, and they got this around them, you know, did you, what do you think they came away with as maybe conclusions from the projects um, or what did you come away with mm -hmm. respect that the students had learned? Um, I think that they truly understand that data is messy, right? And you, people can make decisions, you can make all kinds of decisions about data and how and what to do with it. For instance, we had lively discussions about race and how do we recategorize the race that was in the data set? And there were plenty of ways that we could do it. And everyone on the team had a different perspective. And so, you know, we had to agree. So they also understand that this work, collaboration is important. I hope they also understand that a diversity of opinions on data science groups are key because everyone's experience truly matters. Um, I think they also understand understood that bias is in, is inherent even in the most uh, even in data you wouldn't think that it exists. For instance, in the data set that we use, we had. Uh, there was one data point about the percentage of owner occupied housing in a track, which we had a discussion about how this is in fact problematic. And should, should this kind of variable be included in a data model? Because we know that you know in certain neighborhoods, there are more rental units than there are owner occupied. And what does that mean if, you, if someone chooses to buy a home in an area like that? Um, 
critical thinking, again, it, it matters a lot in really being able to tackle problems from all different kinds of, of angles. Um, and I think they also learned that cleaning data takes time. And in fact, it takes the majority of, of any of the time for any data science project and being able to really track the kind of decisions you make and stand on the decisions that you make based on the research that you are doing, you know, in, in order to, to help your audience understand why you made the decisions that you made. Excellent. Yeah. Well, and, and frankly, right, there's a, there's a lot of good, you know, good things there. And, you know, one of the things that I, what I really like about, you know, the insights that you have, uh, Dr. Miller is, you know, what one is around that sort of active dialogue, right? I mean, I, I think discussing the problem honestly and, and you know, focusing on it, it, it doesn't happen enough, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think it has to happen more, right? And that's why I was so happy about this this project, the way it was set up. But moreover, right, you know, talking about track data and, and going down to that, that level is really important, right? There's a lot of ways that bias is imputed in data, right? And so knowing that there's more rental incomes or, or lower, lower um lower cost sort of housing in particular zip codes, really important, right? And so even though a zip code may not be used in a model, right, that type of housing could be that proxy, right, um, which would drive bias. And, you know, you're absolutely correct. A huge amount of work gets done thinking through that, right, because the modeling aspect, right, building models is actually one of the easier parts, right? That's yep. an algorithm that you get to run, but, but making the human decisions, right, um, and doing that as a group and, and hearing everyone out, I, I think is critically important. So I, I, I really love to hear that, you know, the, the, like the tracked information and, and thinking like that was part of the, the exercise because it goes, you know, a step deeper in terms of, you know, all the different mm -hmm. ways that you know, imputed bias could, you know, rise into the data set. Right. Do, do, Dr. Lotson, uh, what about your perspectives on, on, you know, where the, the students ended up? Did they get to a point, do you think, where they're going to, you know, reshape their understanding and maybe take this forward as in their careers? Absolutely. And I think it's something that we encourage even here in our program. So now what are you going to do with the data? What are you going to do with what you have uncovered? What are you going to do with what you have discovered? So now are there artifacts that you can create? Are there dashboards? What type of visualizations can you provide to um, a particular population? You know, are there some people or, or some communities that you can enlighten by what you've discovered so that now you can actually take what you've learned, what you've discovered, what you've been able to analyze and draw from the from the data, from the research, from the discussions that you've had in your groups. Are you able to now move this to an actual prototype, an actual artifact, an actual something that now you can provide to, um, <clears throat> yeah, just to those communities? And I think they're there. I think if the opportunity presented themselves, I could just, you know, I could put them in a room now and they can probably come up with a website dashboard that would, you know, answer some questions for their particular communities on how to better um, look at FICO scores or how to better set themselves up for housing or, you know, and particularly as it relates to their particular communities. I think that made the most insight. So yeah. not only to be able to, um, look at the challenge, research the problem, walk through the process of actually analyzing it. So now the final step is what you're going to do with it. You know, how are you going to make use of what you've discovered to improve upon something else? Because that's what technology is, right? An improvement on something that's currently existing. So can you take what you've done? Can you think about how you can apply the information that you've gleaned and learned what can you do now to improve upon something to make technology even better? I, I love it. And, and, and frankly, right, you know, we have, you know, AI acts and, and, and other sort of, you know, um, regulatory sort of pressures where, you know, these conversations have to occur. And, and you know, having each of these students having been exposed, right, and, and getting to a level of expertise that, you know, is, is on par with how practitioners, you know, do this uh, in, within industry, right? I think is important. And I love the way that you talk about, you know, bringing it to, to other communities or, or other work products. I can imagine each of these students, you know, going off in their careers and, and being that voice in the room that, that educates others around the fact that, you know, bias is inherent and how to look at it and, and, and bringing that awareness. And I, I think that awareness is one of the things that's, that's most critical, right? And, you know, I, I think we, 
very often, many of us don't understand just how pervasive models are and scores uh, in, in every decision that gets made around us and, and having these young people that can go and be part of that conversation from a, a very tangible and experienced place is really important. And you know, I don't, don't need to tell you, uh, you're both professors, right? This education is super important, right? Because it allows them to educate everyone else. And I love the comments about the community because we, that's what we need to do. We need to make sure that this is always a topic, right? Um, and one that is super important because it helps form those, you know, the, the models behind a lot of the decisions that impact different communities and, and different people. So I love it. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's turn to our, to our two students then and, and get their perspectives. So, um, uh, I'd like to uh, thank you, Olivia and uh, Medina, for um, representing your teams. I mean, you're two, two of the students um, that were focused on this challenge, um, along with uh, a larger team. And, and as was mentioned, uh, you both are, are strong in data science and, and working with data. So it'll be really interesting to get your, your perspectives. Um, so, you know, as, as this got presented to you, um, I, I will ask kind of a similar question. You know, what were your initial impressions? How did you approach the project, right? You were kind of given the, the broad views, which were, you know, this is data from the CFPB. It's the Home Mortgage um, Disclosure Act. Um, you were given data that we, we, we at FICO kind of cut, cut in different slices, right? In terms of the, the overall data set. Um, and then, you know, asked to look for bias and, and make recommendations on how to adjust your data to, to make a better model. And, you know, that's a big ask for a semester. Um, and so I was just curious, you know, how, how, did, it, how did the project start? Um, and well, how did you first attack that really, really big problem? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, we started off as the professors talked about, you know, we, we had to understand what is bias because that was very important because before we get address tackling something, we have to understand what is it that we're trying to tackle? So once we understood um, what bias was, we began to actually look at the data. Um, and I think one thing that stood out to us was how big the data set was, how many variables that was there were. Um, so that was really fun to kind of look at, um, see what each variable meant, you know, how it might have an impact. So we started to think about, okay, what variables might have an impact? You know, what variables might inherently have bias? You know, things such as race, gender, et cetera. Um, and then we were all really excited to, you know, tackle something with, like you said, you know, life-changing impacts such as a credit score. So that was all really, you know, exciting for us. Excellent. And Medina, what were your thoughts as you started the project? Yeah, I think Olivia really hit it on that we were really just shocked on how large these data sets can be when it comes to creating these um, credit scores and loan amounts. Um, also, just having to look at these variables in a data set and look into a data dictionary, which gave the different um, uh, definitions for what these variables mean, especially in this context, and then having to do research on our own to really dive into what we're looking at, what FICO was looking for, and how we can approach this in the best way, especially because we come from di diverse um, experiences in our degree program. Got it. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that that you know, I, I heard students comment about the data set was, you know, they, they were a little surprised at, you know, the amount of missing values and the, and the amount of variety of, of data um, that was there. And, I, you know, I guess the, maybe the best word is co complexity. And, you know, I think you already referenced that there was a lot there. Um, you know, what were your thoughts about that complexity and, and, and how to, to, to narrow in? Right. Because in some sense, like, when things are really complex, like these sort of data sets, and it's a big, hard problem, like, you know, bias in data, um, you know, very often you could throw up your hands and just not know where to go. So, like, how did you all kind of first sort of focus down on, okay, let's let's get to work and let's take a really hard problem and, and break it down into pieces? What, what, what were the strategies there to, to kind of, you know, get over that sort of size of problem um, and, and to, to make forward progress? Definitely. So um, I would say that, you know, what does all come from different backgrounds and having different strengths? Um, we first looked at, you know, what are the strengths of our team? You know, what are we all really good at? And then we kind of broke it down. So we took um, we made sure that we understood what each variable meant, like separately. And we all made sure that we understood how how can that contribute to bias? How can that contribute to a credit score? So I think that making sure that it was bite sized was kind of how we took that on, make sure that we weren't taking trying to take on the entire data set at one time, because that would have been probably really overwhelming for us as a team. Got it. Yeah. Medina, thoughts? 
Yeah. Um, again, I think also talking to the mentors that we were given, um, those they were very helpful in helping us break down this problem and just seeing how FICO approaches this in a, their way and then how we would approach it. Some of us have previous research um, experience and some of us don't. So it was really helpful to see um, how we can kind of break it apart ourselves and then come back during our class times to really show what we have and combine our thought processes. Oh, I, I like that. And, you know, I, one of the things that's really important for us also at FICO is to, to work with, with the students and understand, you know, where, where you're focused, right? I mean, like, you know, FICO spends a huge amount of time on, on data and, and data bias and studying data. Um, but we continually need to refresh our perspectives. And one of the best ways to bring other people into the conversation and uh, other perspectives. And so in, in the same sense, you know, the, the methodical work that you did to, to break down this problem and understand each field and have a conversation about it, right? I'll tell you, in, in many data science projects, you know, people just don't do that. They, you know, they, they throw data onto a, onto a cloud and they build a model and they start using, right? And, and you know, taking the time to, to look at each of these things, talking to experts like the mentors and, and get some ideas from them and try to apply them and, and you use your own approaches, right? All super important. You know, I mentioned responsible AI was, you know, part of building a robust model and then it's around explainable model and ethical model and auditable model. I mean, you all were focused, you know, obviously on the bias remediation, but you, the way you approached it was actually, you know, robust, right? You know, take your time, think about each field. Should we use it? Should we not? How to deal with it? I know, like, many students looked at the the, the gender flags. You know, we had, you know, the the primary and, and the secondary applicant and, you know, what to do with, with those different um, mixes of, of information and when it's missing and really really hard problems and i think as, as dr miller mentioned right that's where we have to spend a lot of our time because if we if we don't do our best to triage all that information then we build a model right um you know it could be faulty for a whole bunch of reasons so um i like the approach right i mean i think everyone should take the time to, to build ai robustly which is to taking that time to really deeply understand now you know the teams you know went through that exercise and as i mentioned before i i was really impressed with the presentation and i really enjoyed all the bias treatment um, conversations and, and detection and ultimately right that the team you know experimented with different ways of, of adjusting the data set right to, to get better improvement in terms of approvals across a variety of, of um, individuals right you had a white caucasian native american uh, African-American black, you had different uh, mixtures of, of gender and, and co-applicants. There's a lot of things to try to improve, right? Um, and, and so, you know, and the team came up with an alternate model, which, which showed improvement across, uh, I think all, but, you know, um, the categories. Um, and so, you know, maybe the question I have for you is, is, is one, which is, you know, based on your experience, right? Obviously going through all that work and, and then building, the, adjusting a model based on, you know, trying to remove or remediate or improve the, the data set to, to remove some of that bias. Um, what do you, how do you view that? Let's say you we took that model and put it into production, right? Um, is, is that just one step along this journey of trying to remediate bias? Um, or is it, you know, is it, do you think it's something that if you spent more time, you could come, you know, continue to make that model, you know, perfect over time? What's your thoughts about how long would it take to maybe get to a model that, you know, um, re removed all the bias or, or, you know, provided more fair outcomes uh, based on your experimentation with this data set? Yeah, um, so with the model, I do believe it is a step towards help mitigating the bias. And I think um, what Dr. Miller said really hit it that a lot of variables when it comes to building these models are inherently biased. So I don't believe it will become a perfect model. I don't think it will be able to completely exterminate bias in general, but I do think that we're in the right steps of helping it lessen. Um, and that's where it come with when we was deciding on how we build our model and how we would want to change the data set around was if we remove one um, variable or if we would decide to change it and recode it or remap it, how would it affect the other variables or the outcome? So that's really where, um, like you said, we were in a very robust thinking process, just trying to think of the multiple outcomes and how it can change and whether it make it worse or for the better. And so I think I do think that we're in a good steps um, towards helping it lessen the bias. 
Excellent. Olivia, you, you agree with that? Yeah, I definitely agree. I feel like, you know, um, removing bias is a gradual process. It's also a continuous process. Um, I don't think there ever be a point where we could say, oh, well, there's definitely no bias in the data. But I definitely agree that, you know, this is one step towards that. And every step makes a difference, especially in the long run. Yeah, no, excellent. Well, I'd agree with both of you, right? I, I you know, I, I, I look at this as a, a process that will, will take time, right? Um, but as we improve models over time, you know, those models will get used and, and, and there'll be less bias in the decisions. And then the data sets will start to converge closer to a fair outcome. But it might might take many, many, many iterations. I know, and I think I mentioned even when I visited Bowie State, you know, someone that wanted to address gender bias um, in Canada. And we had these conversations around, you know, generations, right? It could take a while, but we need to take the steps now, right? And this is a, a great first step, right, is, is that, Know, addressing these the bias issue early on, but then looking to it as an evolutionary process, and, and we get to a, to a better place, and um, so a very very positive outcome in terms of you know building a model and knowing that as we apply it, we, we incrementally make things um, better over time. Now we're getting to the end of our our conversation, and you know it, it's really important to me um, and to FICO that we train a diverse and talented set of um, a diverse style group of students who, you know, drive the future of, of AI innovation and responsible AI practices forward. You know, we're at the very beginning of this concept of responsible AI. I think I started talking about eight years ago, and now the larger industry talks about it. You all are on the ground floor of, of applying this. And, you know, I'm, I'm personally jealous and excited for you, right? I mean, I wish I was um, your age again um, and, and armed with, you know, everything that you have ahead of you um, as you move on in your careers. And so, you know, I, I guess the question for both of you is, you know, you know, how do you think this will incorporate into your future career plans, right? Does, does this change or, or maybe just enhance the way you look at what you want to do in your, in your careers as you uh, finalize your education and move on to, to make an impact in the world? Yeah, well, I would definitely uh, recommend this to other students and other colleges um, for this program and similar ones. For me, I'm finishing up my degree in computer technology with the focus in internet technology and web services. So doing this program and this um, this challenge has helped me hone in in some of the skills that I haven't really touched in and also refine on skills that I have, and especially in coding. Um, so for working towards that, some of the courses I'm taking now has really hit on some of these skills that I need to use, and it has helped me um, with this, these courses, so especially with the Python and data analytics. Um, and also, as my career continues, I would definitely see myself using, um, using them to help me, especially in collaboration, as we were talking about how multiple people have been collaborating in teams have different mindsets and different processes on how to approach problems. So I think especially with this challenge and talking with the mentors and the team with FICO and my team at Bowie, it would definitely help me with these skills and I would definitely use it in the future. That's wonderful, Medina. And Olivia, your thoughts? Yeah, I definitely agree with Medina. You know, we've learned a lot of both hard and soft skills in this challenge. You know, we've learned hard skills like, you know, working with the data, manipulating data, cleaning the data, which have been really amazing. And I can definitely see myself, you know, using that in my future, but also really soft skills. Like, for example, we learned, you know, collaboration, working with the diverse, the diverse mindsets that come with, you know, working on a team. And I feel like all of those skills, you know, play a really integral part in our future, whether we decide to go into, you know, further into AI, further into software development, or if we choose to pursue really any other field, you know, you're always going to need those skills with people and those skills with, you know, interpreting how people are thinking and understanding them. So I think that working with this challenge has been, you know, super useful, no matter what we decide to pursue in our future. That, that's wonderful to hear. And I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that you, you take that away. And, you know, I, I think, um, although I'm not your age, right, um, I, I, I'm continuously learning myself, right. Um, and, you know, like, when Medina, you mentioned, you know, that, you know, you're learning things in your classes now that you could could apply to the challenge. And, and and this is, you know, very much, you know, like I'll have problems that I need to solve and I don't quite yet know how to solve them. And eventually I learn more or I, I learn from others more um, on how to, to address. And so it's, you know, it's a continual sort of process. And so, you know, this this evolution and then, you know, the soft skill aspect of this is super important. I think really early on, um, Dr. Lawson mentioned about domain and how important domain is, right? If we don't understand deeply 
you know, how these models get applied and, and, and having those sort of conversations. We could be completely blindsided, even if all our data science skills are, are top notch, right? If we don't ask the right questions and don't get the right perspective. So um, it sounds really, really super balanced. And I'm, I'm really happy that you both come away with, with skills and, and experience that you'll continue to build on as you move on in your careers. Um, so with that, let's um, thank you, uh, ladies, for, for the conversation uh, and the student perspective here. Uh, let's bring everyone back. We can bring the professors back. Okay, thank you. So, um, team, you know, this has been a wonderful experience for me. Um, just seeing the, the the positive impact that the um, that the the FICO educational challenges had on, on Bowie State University. Um, it's been phenomenal, you know, getting to partner with the professors, uh, Dr. Lots and Dr. Miller, but also just as such a talented and wonderful group of students. Again, it was one of the, the highlights of my, uh, my my entire um, year is to spend a little time with with the students, and uh, you know I'm I'm so pleased that they came away with with a different perspective um, and different skills and learned from each other, and, and I think all the objectives were achieved from from my perspective. Um, so so thank you for that. Um, from it's very very important to me and to FICO. And then, you know, on top of that, I, I hope that in, in the fall that we, um, you know, we'll continue this program for other uh, colleges in the spring. Um, but in the fall, we're going to start another one. And I, I hope we can count on Bowie State to bring its talented students to a different data science uh, project. And this one's going to be around fraud detection, um, which is a really another really different uh, and challenging project. So I, I hope maybe to, to see some of the same students or a new group of students that will come in and, and to, to help play this role and continue to get that real life practitioner experience. It's, it's been phenomenal for me and I've learned a lot from it also. So thank you again. I just wanna say thank you to FICO and you, Scott. Um, it's been a great experience and I appreciate FICO bringing the opportunity to Bowie and we're looking forward to the next one. Our pleasure. Thank you.